Coming up on DC News Now at 4. It has been a week since a home explosion in Virginia that killed a firefighter and injured at least a dozen more. Where that investigation stands this afternoon. Plus, D.C. Council Member Brianne Nadeau is facing a recall effort. I see everything as a serious threat and I take nothing for granted. How she's responding to her critics. Well, a secondary cold front will be moving through tonight, providing isolated showers, and then we're tracking to cool down. Then February is American Heart Month. We're speaking with an expert about the healthy lifestyle changes you can make to protect yourself. Hey, baby. How y'all feeling today? And as we honor black history, get to know a cafeteria worker at Catholic University who is being honored for her 50 years of service. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Friday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gill. We'll get to those top stories in just a few minutes, but we want to take a look outside, getting you ready for your weekend. This is a live look at Roslyn right now. We saw some rain earlier today, Mark. We did, but the weekend is still here, Annalisa. Let's head over to Brittany Ward with a first look at the forecast. And Brittany, just like Annalisa said, it's just not the greatest Friday, but we're here. Yeah, and you know what? We finally made it to the weekend, and we're slowly starting to see those showers roll their way out of the DMV. So here's a look at radar showing you the last couple of hours. We started to see those showers work their way into our southern counties, but stopping radar right now to show you where they are at. We are basically seeing dry conditions across the entire area, and this will be the trend as we head through your evening with the exception of the Mountain County. Zoom in radar out to show you what's to come. We are keeping our eye out on this cold front right now that's making its way into Pennsylvania. This will begin to dip into our area as we head into your evening. This could provide some more isolated showers, especially as you head further along the Mountain Counties and Garrett County portions of the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. And then behind that cold front, we are tracking cooler conditions as as we open up the weekend, but at least we will be dry. Temperature wise, still holding on to the 50s across much of the area. 51 currently in the nation's capital. 52 as you get over there to uh, Frederick, lower 50s though in Loray. But notice where the rain has just left the area. You're seeing those cooler temperatures. Lexington Park, you guys are coming in at 49 degrees. Uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, you guys are also coming in at 49 degrees. So, what to expect as we head into your week? Weekend. We're looking at a cool down through your Saturday. We're going to be talking mostly cloudy skies, but then sunshine does return as we end out your weekend. Lower 60s to kickstart the work week with the mixture of sun and clouds, but we are tracking more showers in that seven day forecast. So definitely keep it here. Full check of that's coming up. Brittany, thank you. New details following a massive Sterling, Virginia home explosion one week after it happened. Loudoun County fire crews say they've wrapped up their investigation on the ground. Yeah, they still believe a leaking underground propane tank near that home caused that blast, killing a firefighter inside. Our Randy Bass is back on scene tonight with more details and reaction from first responders. Randy. Yeah, Mark and Elisa, some first responders we talked to just a few minutes ago told us they came back here to the scene today for the first time since it all happened. Take a look at what's left behind for yourself. They told us seeing it all again up close was very emotionally overwhelming for them, telling us some of them were pulled from the very rubble that you're seeing right now. Again, coming back here today to see it all for the first time since it happened. We did not speak with them on camera right now, though, a memorial for their fallen colleague Trevor Brown sits inside the fence here along Silver Ridge Drive. 13 others were injured in that blast. Only one firefighter right now is still in the hospital being treated at the MedStar Burn Center in DC. Fire crews say at least six other nearby homes were damaged. Early damage estimates are totaling around two and a half million dollars right now. Neighbors and onlookers from near and far have been coming by throughout the day just to get a glimpse at everything left behind. Right now, though, plans are being made for firefighter Trevor Brown and his celebration of life. Right now, those plans are set for Monday, March 4th at the Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg. Neighbors here in the Sugarland Run neighborhood are also planning a community vigil for this Sunday evening. Live in Sterling, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now.
All right, Randy, thank you. Well, developing now, a Prince George's County police officer suspended without pay is facing serious charges tonight. Corporal David Hardster was arrested this morning. He's charged with attempted murder in Charles County and second degree assault in St. Mary's County. Investigators say he discharged his service weapon during an altercation in Charles County just after 1 a.m. And the assault charge is connected to a domestic incident earlier that evening at his home in St. Mary's County. The corporal joined the department in 2000 five and he currently works with the Bureau of Patrol. Well, a man is dead in Montgomery County after being hit by a train in Gaithersburg on Thursday and police believe that that same man was involved in the stabbing that just happened moments before his death. Candace Cole has more. Police say the man they believe to be responsible for stabbing a woman last night fled that scene and then was killed while trespassing on these train tracks. Police say it happened around 930 Thursday night near East Diamond Avenue and Railroad Street. According to a post on X by Montgomery County Fire and Rescue spokesperson Pete Perringer, rescue crews found the man with traumatic injuries. He died there on the scene. According to Gaithersburg Police, the man who was killed last night matches the description of a man involved in stabbing a 51 year old woman in Gaithersburg that was reported at 859 p.m. last night. That happened in the 500 block of Gerard Street. The woman is listed in critical condition. Police are still investigating that incident. We will bring you the latest updates as we get them. Reporting in Gaithersburg, Candace Cole, DC News Now. All right, Candace, thank you. Meanwhile, in the district, a man is dead and another has been injured after an early morning shooting in Northeast Washington. Police were first responding to the shooting there in the 6200 block of Dick Street around 5 a.m. So far, no arrests have been made. No further details were provided about the homicide investigation. And happening right now, D.C. police are on the scene of another homicide investigation at the Ivy City Hotel, also in Northeast Washington. Police say this morning after 11 a.m., they found a woman unconscious. She died at the scene. This is a live look. There you can see the officers walking around trying to gather as many details as possible. This is the same hotel that a Virginia woman was fatally stabbed in in March of last Last year. We'll take a look. Police are looking for this suspect. They say he is connected to eight armed robberies in Prince George's County. The first one started November of last year. The latest on January 30th of this year. Police say he targets businesses near Livingston Road and Indian Head Highway. So far, he has targeted multiple convenience stores, cell phone stores, and fast food restaurants. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Uh, two former D.C. Walgreens managers, along with two others, have been charged with a series of inside job robberies in Chinatown. According to the U.S. Attorney Matt Graves' office, Michael Robinson and London Teeter worked as managers at the Walgreens on 7th Street Northwest starting in July of last year when Robinson or Teeter were working. One of their accomplices would enter the store with a gun and demand money that only a manager could access. Charging documents state that only Robinson and Teeter had the code to gain access to the money. One time, Robinson even asked the robber to hit him with their gun to make it look more believable. This case is now being investigated by the FBI's Violent Crimes Task Force. Well, happening now, Fairfax Connector Bus Service will be suspended for over the weekend after two days of workers on strike there. Bus service was suspended today and yesterday after workers went on strike because of what they called unfair labor practices with contractor TransDev. Hundreds of Fairfax Connector workers went on strike yesterday. At least three Fairfax Connector garages there. Union leaders say the workers have been working under expired contracts since December of 2023. The union, meanwhile, saying the first bargaining session is on October 13th of 2023. They had that one. Then their contract expired on November 30th. On no December 19th, members voted to strike if necessary. And yesterday, they officially went on strike. How long do you plan to strike until you get what you believe you deserve? Uh, I feel I feel it should take how long how longer it takes till till Transdev learns what we're worth and what we need to be what needs to be done. Now, in a statement to DC News, now Transdev says it was disappointed over the decision to initiate a strike there, despite their generous offer. Well, DC's national public radio station WAMU or WAMU says that they're shutting down the beloved local news site DCist and laying off 15 staffers, and that's according to a new article from Axios. 
They said it's part of a strategic shift focus on radio instead of digital print media. WAMU says that they will be adding new positions in the wake of those layoffs. New and four governors from across the country met at the White House today, among them Maryland Governor Wes Moore. The governors from more than 40 states and territories shared ideas while also voicing their frustrations about the things that are not working. For example, Governor Wes Moore says governors are taking on most of the challenges associated with the immigration crisis. So the thing we also encouraged the president was uh, that uh, we encourage him to use every lever in his power to include executive action, to be able to help address this issue and to be able to support local jurisdictions as we continue to, uh, to deal with the immigration crisis. Moore says the meeting was a great conversation and the governors remain committed to getting things done in their states.